Hey, so I'm going to try and add something right now. So I really don't know what happened earlier, but um, I'm going to try and add something. Hi, Samson, you can request to join now. Yes, just a second. Hi, Samson, can you see me now? Yes, I can see you now. Yeah, Yay. Good <laughs> Hi. Good evening. Yeah, good Hi. evening. Good evening. Thank you so much for joining our live and our second edition of uh, Conversations on TEDx Lagos. It's so good to see you again, even if I feel like I see you every time because of, you know, social media. I see the amazing work that you do and your pictures around. So, Thank yeah, so it's so good to see you again. Thank you so much for joining. I feel like we're going to have a lecture today, like a very, very interesting lecture. So, for everybody who just joined right now, I'll just start um, again. I don't think you might have seen what I sent um, what I shared initially. So pretty much this is uh, a new series that we started on TEDx Lagos called Conversations where we would interact with some of our past speakers to um, talk about the amazing things that they do. However, in ways that is also pretty much solving the current situation that we are experiencing mm -hmm. all over the world right now. And um, Samson spoke at an uh, um, event a couple of years ago. And like I mentioned, he's a farmer, a passionate he's really really passionate about soilless farming and um it was from him um, i got to learn about hydroponics and aeroponics but i feel like he's going to explain everything more so i can see a board at his back i feel like we're going to have a lecture today on how to grow food in your house so backstory everyone so during our tedx event a couple of years ago we had a tedx adventure at um samson's um i'll call it his soilless farm and i was just looking like I mean, these things are like growing. This is food glory. It's actually growing out of like very interesting places. And I could just imagine mirroring that kind of thing in my own house. And um, I was very fascinated. And really, my mind was totally blown just seeing that I could actually grow food in my space. That was quite having like a very big, you know, garden or anything. So, um, yes. So, hi, Samson. And thanks for joining us. You, if you want to just, mm -hmm. just tell our audience a few minutes who you are, what you do, and everything. Okay, so I'm Samson Ogwale, and I'm a farmer. I'm a firm believer that uh, food production should not be seasonal because hunger is not seasonal. So as a farmer, it's my job to ensure that it's not dependent on season in a way that is healthy for the farmer, healthy for the consumer, and of course, healthy for the environment. So whatever it is that needs to be done to ensure food production is not seasonal at the same time that production is healthy for the farmer, the consumer, and the environment, that is what I stand for, essentially. Okay. I was trying to hurriedly type the topic so it could just be pinned on our profile. So in case anybody joins later, they can always see what we're talking about. Yes, so basically... Okay. Um, like I mentioned, like I was very, very fascinated when you did speak at our event a couple of years ago, and also even more fascinated when we, were, when we came over to your soilless farm and then we saw what you were able to do, what you actually, in practical terms, what you do in terms of growing food. I know that you always said that you know food should be, you, we should be able to you know plant or harvest food like any time. It should not be seasonal. And um, I saw it like real life. Like if I want like strawberry, like. That I can actually plant strawberry in my house. Like it was just so fascinating and all. So I think we, let's start from the beginning, beginning for the base, so from the basic, basic yeah. level. Um, first of all, what is the meaning of hydroponics? Okay, so hydroponics by definition, the word hydro means water. The word ponics means to label. So uh, if we decide to define it by it simply means laboring inside water as opposed to hydroponics, which is laboring in soil. Now, hydroponics in the simplest form is growing plant without the use of soil. And usually the first question people would always ask is, how can a plant grow without soil? 
a soil not supposed to be the foundation for growing plants? And my answer to that is yes and no. Yes, because this is what we have always been used to, that there has to be soil for plants to grow. But no, because once we understand the function of soil, it becomes easy to replace soil with something else that can perform that same function. So we always begin with trying to understand what is the function of soil. Because mm -hmm. if I understand the function of soil, it is now easier for me to replace soil with something else. So soil has three basic functions for the plants, just three. The number okay. one function of soil is to support the plants. That is to hold the plants in place, to support. The second function of soil is to retain water, to hold water. And the third function of soil is to help in aeration for air to be able to pass. Uh, for the listeners, an easier way to remember this is in primary school or secondary school, sometimes in life, we are taught the three types of soil. There is loamy soil, there is sandy soil, and there is clay soil. And we were also told that the best kind of soil for growing is loamy soil, but we were not told why. So yeah. looking at the three characteristics of soil, we start with clay soil. By what we understand with clay soil, from what we understand with clay soil, clay soil can support a plant. It can hold a plant in place. Clay soil can hold water, but clay soil will not allow air to pass, which is why we don't use clay soil for growing. Sandy soil cannot support a plant very well, it cannot hold the plant very well. Sandy soil, sandy soil will allow air to pass, meaning amongst the three functions of soil, sandy soil can only perform one of the functions. Then when it comes to loamy soil, loamy soil can support the plants, retain water, allow air to pass. So soilless farming is simply looking for something that can perform the same function as loamy soil, excuse me, but it is not soil. Hmm. So anything that I have that can perform the function of loamy soil, it is not soil, that yeah. is simply hydroponics. Hmm, interesting, interesting. Okay, so um, I know that the next question I would ask is something that I, I wanted to first of all like discuss it with you before we dive into how to grow food in your house. And the question is more from the whole COVID situation, the whole COVID-19 situation, and um, what your take is on it as regards food security. Okay, I didn't get the question. That's my take on COVID-19 on food security. Yes, so your take on COVID-19 on, you know, as regards food security. Okay, um, because of time, there are actually five key things that would happen because of COVID-19 as it relates to food security. And these five things are lessons I drew or we are drawing from what happened in the time of Ebola. Yeah. Unfortunately, worse than Ebola, COVID-19 came at a time when it is time for regular, everyday farmers to go to the farm. The rains are just coming in, which means farmers right now are supposed to start going to the farm. Two, so, for those farmers that are even able to use strong head and say, I want to go to the farm, the farmers require what we call inputs, either in the form of uh, seeds, poles, cutlass, equipment, whatever it is they need to plant. So you realize that even if those farmers can go to the farm, the input they need for the farm is not available. And then for some of these farmers that planted early, the laborers are not there to work the farm. Mm -hmm. So essentially, we are going to have a break in the value chain of food production in the country. Meaning, over time, first and foremost, the price of food that remains available will spike. It will go up. This was what happened during Ebola time. If you check out the price of egg now in the market, the price of egg has started skyrocketing. So the price of food will go up, production will go down, and 
God forbid that this thing takes so long before they call off the lockdown and all of that. It simply means that farmers are going to miss planting season. And if mm. farmers miss planting season, we are in a country where about 46% of us, according to the word um, poverty, whatever guy said, that 46% of Nigerians are poor. What that actually means is most people that are poor are predominantly farmers. So the 46% that are poor are not still able to go to farm to even make what they used to make. So mm. it means that the dependence on the uh, state, on the government will be so much, one. Two, this is also again happening at a time where the price of oil is falling, which means as a nation, we are going to dip into our foreign reserve because so many nations are being locked down at the moment, except China, many countries are not even also able to produce food. It means it will not just be a Nigerian problem, it will become a global problem. As if that is not bad enough, you realize that so many companies today are cutting and slashing the salaries of their workers, which means their buying power would also reduce. So we have multi-facet problems. First, the food is not available. The little that is available is too expensive. Worse than that, people do not have enough buying powers because their salaries have been slashed. So mm -hmm. it's a multi-faceted problem. Wow. Wow. So, um, wow, that, that was a lot. <laughs> because... Whoa. Okay. So what I'm thinking now is there actually has to be a way to, should I say cushion the effect of this, you know, like, like, do you, do you feel like if people take up, um, hydroponics, um, if they start learning to plant their food at home, do you think this can actually cushion the effect at least to a good extent as opposed to, you know, yeah. Do you think this can actually help? Yes, it will, if we can actually pick up hydroponics as individuals. So imagine in your community right now, you decide, yeah. I want to grow tomatoes. Your neighbor is growing pepper. Your other person is growing onion. You can on your own do trade by butter to have, exchange your onions for your pepper, your pepper for your tomatoes and all of that. This mm. becomes less stress on the market. It fills up that gap missing in production. And much mm -hmm. more than that, because you are producing from your neighborhood, it is actually going to reduce waste. So, yes, hydroponics is going to play a big role where everybody who can plant something should actually plant something. So that we know that those who are not planting are people that do not even have the means or do not have the knowledge or technical know-how to plant anything. Okay, so personally... I would like to learn how to grow food in my house because yeah. I, 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 would like to learn, I really want to learn how to grow food in my house. And, and honestly, like the idea for this conversation was not to like project like gloom or, you know, things would be very, 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 very bad, but also like, you know, that was actually not the idea for it. However, it's always still important to say the hard truth, you know, truth that people don't really want to hear, but you know, the hard, hard truth, because yes, as a result of, of COVID-19 and the whole shutdown, um, this everything that you know something just said would actually happen. So, um, but I also would like to know how to go food at home. Um, and I know like quite a number of people watching. Like they definitely, I don't think everybody has like you know big compound spaces. So how can we even just have the basics of planting food, even if it's something that we can grow and eat? Before I even know that my neighbor is maybe planting tomatoes or something that I can even go and exchange. How can I grow okay. something, you know, in my okay. own space? First and foremost, everybody can grow something. Everybody. I am okay. going to be using things that we come across every day to try to explain how we can grow. Uh, because of time, I actually cut some of these things down. I am sure okay. we know what this is. This is a That's regular a pet bottle. Water bottle, yes. A normal water bottle, pet bottle. Mm -hmm. So all I have simply done is I used my knife. I cut this into two. Okay. Now, in cutting, the lower part you notice is uh, larger than the upper part. So let me bring out a ruler to explain. I hope I don't know if it is clear. It's clear, very clear. I can see. It. So you, can see you just need to make water. this part smaller. So okay. all I need to do is remember that I said in hydroponics, 
we are simply removing the soil component and replacing with anything that can replace soil. Yeah. So once I cut off this, I put a small hole on the cover. Now the essence of the cover, the hole in the cover is so that I can run a thread through, a regular thread, a wool, like okay. the threads they use for kerosene stove those days. Okay. So I have the thread, part of the thread at the top, the other part of the thread at the bottom. Inside here, I put my water. Inside the water, I put my nutrient, whatever nutrient I want to use for growing. I place this over the top. I can get coconut coil. I can get charcoal. Anything okay. I can use to fill up this place. Once I fill it up, I put my seed inside. Whatever seed I want to plant, whether it is one vegetable or the other, I put the seed inside and I drop it somewhere, arrange it properly. With this, I don't need to water every day because my plant can take water from here, cut seed of the trade, and I am growing my plants. This is an example. For some people, this may look like ah, this is tedious. Another example is this is a normal a normal pet bottle. All yeah. I simply did, I cut the bottom out. I cut the bottom out in a slanty way. So this bottom is slanted, sort of. I don't know if you can see it. Yes, yeah. I the can. bottom is slanted, sort of. Now, I can put in. So here there is a hole at the bottom. Again, there is a hole at the bottom. I fill in whatever substrate I want to use. Coconut okay. coil, coconut coil are those things from coconut like sponge. Rice hull, those things from rice that they throw out from rice hulls. Pour it inside here. I place my seed. Then to a wall. So I can have so many of them. Get a carpenter to build like a wooden platform. I nail it to it. So the reason why there is a hole at the bottom is when rain falls, now we are entering rainy season, when rain falls, it waters the plant automatically. The excess water can drain out from the bottom, and with this, you are growing your plant. So if I have 20 of these arranged on each other, I have yeah. a vertical plant in my small space. Yeah. So this I can easily do with pet bottle. Now, some people may can say, oh, have Yes, Sorry, please. please continue. Okay, I was just going no, to ask that. that. Yes, yes, I was going to ask a question. That as regards the, when you say like putting like the back of coconut, that's um, as, like, is it the the hard part or the or the brown things on the body? No, the brown things on the body that looks like sponge. Okay, 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 okay. So okay. that's what you use to grow your plants here. What about the rice? You, said, you mentioned oh, something the rice, you. No? Yeah, the rice hull. When you go to a rice milling company, that's okay. a shaft that they throw out. You can use it to grow. Okay. You okay. can use okay. that as well to grow. Yes. Okay. 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 So this is one example. A second example for those that cannot do this. Like I said, we have different systems. For those that cannot do that, you can get a regular bowl. Okay. You get a regular bowl. I don't know if you can see this on the table. Yeah, I, can, I can see a regular bowl, yes. Then, this is a styrofoam. Styrofoam is that thing that they use in packaging electronics. Yes. That stuff is in packaging electronics. Now, I want to convert this to a farm. All I need to do is I can use a drill. I can get a drilling machine like this. If I don't have a drilling machine, I can get a container of uh, milk, burn the top to bore a hole. So, just a minute, let me fix this. So, I want to put a hole on this. Wow. Okay. So I have put a hole. Okay. Now, if my hole, I don't have uh, the smaller, what is it called at home? I don't have the small 
disposable cup. There are those smaller disposable cups that are two inches in diameter. So yeah. if you have the small disposable cup, you can use that. Yeah. Here I have a regular mesh net. They are like small, small baskets. I put it inside my hole. Now, the next question somebody would ask is, how many holes I put on my styrofoam? It depends on how much space the plant requires to grow. So I have this. Remember we said that soil has three basic functions. Number one is support. Number yeah. two is to reach water. Number yeah. three is for air to pass. So you notice that in placing my styrofoam on my container, I allow some space. The essence mm -hmm. of this space is for air to pass. So I have taken care of aeration the bowl is where my water and nutrients will be so the bowl has taken care of water retention mm -hmm. this that i have created for the top is what will support the plant so if i have my plant here we have specially cut foams so i take my seed put it in between place on top fix so you must ensure that the bottom of this is in contact with the water. With that, I am done with planting. Hmm. Wow. Problem, I have no interaction with soil wow. in any way. So this is another example of what I can do. Then for someone else, for somebody else, they may have a closed container that they say they do not have access to sterile for maybe they have a paint bucket, uh, mm -hmm. the normal paint bucket. They have a bucket that is totally enclosed. If they have a bucket that is totally enclosed, it's not an issue. The same principle, boreholes, use your disposable cup. If you are using disposable cup, you put holes at the bottom of the disposable cup so that it can get in contact with the water. Now, because the container you are using this time does not have any space for air to get inside, yeah. you buy what we call air stone. This air stone is like a small stone. It's the same thing you see inside the aquarium that brings oh. bubbles. Yeah, yeah. So once you can go on Jumia to buy air stone, just type air stone, once you buy air stone, you buy an air pump. So you connect your air stone to your air pump, you are done. So with that, that produces bubbles, which is the oxygen within the water, and your plants can grow to maturity. So essentially, the point is, anybody can do hydroponics, irrespective of where you are. If what you have, some people may say, okay, these ones are still looking difficult. You can look for a PVC pipe. This is a regular okay. PVC pipe. Yeah. I don't know if you can see. Okay, if you probably noticed, I was trying to do this before the class, but because of them, I have cut a hole around here. Yeah. Then if you see it, there is a hole here. Yes. So imagine a PVC pipe standing like this. I put a hole here, a hole here, a hole, a hole, till I get to the bottom. And I fill this space inside. I don't know if you can see it. I fill the whole of this space with whatever substrate I want to use to grow. And I plant my seed here. Every morning before I go out, or since we have on lockdown, every morning I just come, I pour water from the top to water everything. My plants will grow out from all sides. So I am doing vertical planting within my small environment and my plants are growing. So if I am growing the plant and I notice the plant wants to fall off, I can use a rope to support their weight up. And that is mm. all and your plants will grow to maturity. So anybody and everybody can do soilless farming in their small environment. It's just about, once you understand these principles that I taught, you can apply it based on what is around you. Yeah. There is no status quo of it has to be this way or this way. You can leave your farm if this is how your space is. It can be flat if this is how your space is. 
if you have enough space, you can cut off the whole of the top of this, fill it up with cocoa coir, put your plants inside. They will grow. The most important thing for the plant is it gets support, it retains water, there is air. It will grow and you apply its nutrients and your plant is good to go. So I don't wow. know if there is any other question. Yeah, okay, so, okay, first of mm -hmm. all, that was really, really, really brilliant. Um, and it's still mm -hmm. just thinking back to when we came over to your place for the TEDx adventure and I was like, this is food, this is food. Like, you know, just all the world standing in like different places and all. So I think my question now is from the perspective of, so if I want to grow yam, for example, you, yeah. know, what's the, you know, what's the duration? How long will it take? You know, like, will it take like one year to grow before I see it super? Will it take six months? If I want to grow rice, if I want to grow tomatoes, like, you know, how long will it take? And um, for someone who has no idea about gardening, farming, like an a layman, layman, like someone who has no clue, but who wants to eat and who wants to be sustainable in terms of food, like, it would be good to have this kind of information. So what do you, so, you know, I don't know if you understand my question. Yeah. Can a layman do this? Yes. So if, for example, there are people watching who wants to start today, you probably have some tomatoes in the house that is getting spoiled. Take the tomatoes, look for a, what is it called, disposable cup. Start from, let, let's even, before you even jump to hydroponics, start from the basis that you understand. Get some soil, pour it inside that your disposable cup, then put your tomato seed inside like that. They are going to start growing. Now, you already know that in about seven days, they will start sprouting. In 21 days, they're already looking like fully grown. But you know that this space is too small for your tomatoes to grow. You know that. Now, because we are on lockdown, you may not have access to go and buy Baco Super Bag. Look for this normal black nylon. I think it's only 15 naira or 20 naira in the market. Buy the black nylon. Look for coconut coil around you. You can, there is urban, uh, urban farms, prudent organic, they can get for you. They can supply to your house. Get it. Get this coconut coil into this nylon. Bore holes at the bottom on your own. I am sure right now some people are not starving yet. Most people that are watching this are not starving yet. So you eat meat and you throw away your carcass. Instead of throwing away all of these things, coconut coil. Every morning, water it. As those things begin to decay, they supply nutrients for your plants. So what would have been does been that you would have spent money to throw away becomes yeah. the nutrient for the new plants that you are growing. And as you continue to do this, yes, you are going to probably notice, oh, maybe the plants are getting yellowish, or maybe the plants are lacking one thing or the other. Thank God it is 2020. Go online. Check what is wrong with your plant. You will get the solution. So it doesn't require rocket science teaching for you to understand. There are some people that right now, they eat things like microgreens a lot. I'm trying to look for the container. So if you are someone that you eat things like microgreens, you eat things like barley and all of that for growing, microgreen is something you can grow in your house in seven days. How do you do it? Get your seeds. Soak it inside water. So rather than going to buy already prepared microgreens, look for a place right now. Maybe they say there is a day that is open. I even go online. Search for those that can deliver microgreens to the house. Buy uh, the seed in bulk. When it gets to you, look for a tray that you are going to use for your growing on your own. Get the seed, soak it in water for about 8 to 12 hours. Once you have soaked the seed for 8 to 12 hours, Bring it out, drain the water, keep it moist in a dark environment. So maybe it's in your cupboard, anywhere that is dark. Keep it inside that dark place. Just ensure it is moist. Don't let it get dried. After one day, you realize they've started growing. Leave it there for another two days. All your microgreen seeds would have germinated properly. Put it in an environment where they get sunlight. Just spray water morning, afternoon, evening. Don't let it dry out. In seven days, your microgreen will be that grown, ready for harvest. That is what you have been paying for. 
So it does not require any rocket uh, science or anything to get it done. If that is so hard, so many people eat onions right now. Yes. And I'm sure when you check multiple kitchen, there is always that onion bulb that is thinking of getting spoiled. Yes. There is always that onion. When you look at it, it's like this guy is planning to get spoiled. Yeah. Take yeah. onion bulb, get a disposable cup, pour water in the cup, get the onion bulb. You will see the bottom of the onion bulb. Put it on top of your disposable cup. The bottom of the on of your onion bulb should not touch the water in the cup. I don't know if that makes sense. The yes. bottom of the onion bulb will not touch the water in the cup. Leave it there. Watch it. In seven days, it will start bringing out roots. In 14 days, the roots will already be in the water. Once you see the roots coming out properly, you can now take it out into whatever thing you have prepared earlier. Put it inside and plant. You are done. It will grow to maturity and that one on your bulb can now give you four to six onions at the end of the day. So rather than losing one onion, the guy that was about to spoil has given you about four or five more. Oh, yeah. Oh, so wow. anybody can do it. And then if you plant tomatoes, most tomatoes outside today are indeterminate tomatoes. So if you what plant a single tomato and only indeterminate, okay. indeterminate. Is it? So indeterminate means... These are tomatoes that when you harvest, you can continue to harvest for like uh, a week. Sorry, oh. for like six months. Sorry, for like six months. So that's hmm. indeterminate tomatoes. So if you plant your tomatoes and the tomatoes is able to pick, train it properly. That means give it proper training, proper ropes and all of that. You realize that that single tomatoes can give you as much as 10 kg before it will die. That is money saved. Yes. Yeah. Wow. So. Wow. Okay. Hmm. Okay. I have a couple of other questions, but I think I should jump right in. Um, someone asked a question um, that as regards the onion, that how do you make sure that the onion um, does not touch the water since you're putting it in a dis like on a disposable cup? So since there's water in the cup, how do you hang the onion? So. Uh, I didn't get a smaller disposable cup. I'm sure we all know the smaller one of this cup. So, if I have my onions, if I notice the onions wants to fall in, I reduce the, le the level of water. I don't need to fill the water to the brim to touch the onions. Okay. I don't know if that makes sense. Yeah, I I don't, the idea is this. Seeds are able to break dormancy when the place is humid. That is why when we plant seed, we put it in the ground and continually water. So we want the place to be humid, but we are not going to throw seed inside water. If not, it will suffocate and die. So mm. putting the onions with that little space, the place becomes humid, and before you know what is happening, this onions breaks dormancy and begins to grow. Wow, okay. Yeah. Okay, so when the cup is really small, that's the small disposable cup, so the onions will literally hang on top of the cup as opposed to just going yes, inside. It will, it will hang yeah. on top of the cup, yes. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. So, the third, so the cup has to be... Um, the cup has to be bigger than... It. Yeah, so the cup can be bigger than the onion, but it's not... Like, if you know the small disposable cup, it's usually very small, and, you know, you know, onions are usually pretty big, so it will always stay yeah. on top of it and all that. Hmm. Okay, okay. Right now, if you have questions, please send your questions right now um, to the comment section and then um, Samson will be glad to answer your question. Someone just said, how do you grow yam with hydroponics and and um, how long does it take to harvest? Okay, so to grow yam with hydroponics, uh, I cannot uh, explain that here because I did not bring things of yam out. Yes. The first method is we use the vine technology. Uh, how do I explain that? For some of us that have seen yam green, you know yam grows with something like a twine, like a rope. Does that make sense? You know yam grows with something like a twine, a rope. So okay. that twine itself, if you cut it and plant, it will give you back yam. I'm thinking of rushing out to bring one to show, but I don't know if we can get... Can I take out two minutes? 
Yeah, yeah, sure. So sure, you can please uh, take out some minutes and just go. So while um Samson is away, I would just say if you have um uh, more questions, please send the question. I'm seeing people actually send quite a number of questions. So please send your question so when he's back you'll be able to um explain um, um you know pretty much answer the questions that you've asked. Honestly, um I know that I don't like you know whatever part of the world that you are, um COVID-19 is pretty much like you know around and it's always just safe to know how to do things yourself so at least you are able to have like sustainable ways that you can eat i actually like food and i really would like to know how to grow food <laughs> uh, you know in case you know even even if the market don't shut down even if um we continue even if the whole shutdown ends like he mentioned earlier um that three major things would happen as you guys you know the price of food spiking off and you know production currently missing a couple of processes and all that so it's really important to know how to grow your food so thank you very much something for coming back thank you i don't know if we can see this yes so i planted this a couple of i think that was last week saturday i was having like a class through facebook where i thought people had to plant and if you look at this this is yam for those that know yam this is yam what wow. i planted was a single node if you look closely you can see it's already producing roots. Yeah. You can see it's already producing roots yeah, already. Yeah. So yeah. So with this this is what I planted inside cocoa koi. So this is going to continue to grow to give me back my year. So which means instead of cutting tubers to plant because this is the reality. Every time you cut tubers to plant in the name of producing year you are planting what somebody should have eaten but when mm. i plant this nobody is going to eat this so i am not removing food from somebody's mouth in the name of trying to plant food yeah then i am now normal yam takes about 9 months so it depends on how big the yam you want is so essentially if you go to places like bain where you realize that their yam leaves are usually very high Oh, when you come cool. to Edo, the hips are low because the way yam grows is it grows long first. When it hits a hard surface, it starts getting fat. So I can determine the size and all that I need depending on the size of the container I use in growing. So right now, if you look at this, this is just less than two weeks old. You may not see it properly, but the tuber is already coming out small. Wow. If you look somewhere around here, the tuber is already coming out, no matter how little it is. Yeah. So there's, oh. a, there's a small tuber already coming out in less than two weeks. So you can do a mathematics of what will happen in eight weeks, in 12 weeks, so I can determine when I want to harvest, essentially. Okay. So that means you can have, like, if you start growing your yam, you can pretty much have yam, like, in eight to 12 weeks. Like you can have no, like eight to weeks is too soon. In about six months, six to nine months, depending on what I want. Yes, ma'am. Okay, you know what I want. That means if I want something slimmer and smaller, you know, we can. It can. That means I would harvest it a lot faster than if I want something really big. Yes. Yes. Wow. Yes. Wow. Hmm. I think I need to start. I need to. I need to talk to you after this class. Just so I, because I need to plant, I need to at least plant one yam. Let me, I, okay, first of all, I definitely really like the idea of farming, but I just don't know how to farm. And this sounds a lot more convenient than the idea of having to have like a cast of land. Okay, so someone asked in the comment section that, can you also plant fruits? I think I know, the answer is yes, but you know, you can. Can you also plant? Fruits, fruits. Yes, you can, depending on what you want. So I just want to use this to explain. So there are different, I can also plant systems on multiple layers. That's why I said it's not like square peg and square hole. You determine what you want once you understand the basics. So if you look at this, for example, this yeah. is a vertical plant. I can put four plants here. One, two, three, four. Now, I can increase my space by putting another set on top. So in this space now, I can get eight. I can decide and say, no, I'm not yet okay. 
it becomes uh, three times four, twelve. I am not yet okay. I can increase that to sixteen. If I wow. think I'm still not okay, I can take that to twenty, and so on and so forth. So you realize that a little space that was supposed to just take one or two yeah. plants now is taking twenty plants. And if I put this on the floor so that you see how I putting it on the floor, you cannot even see it yet. So yeah, yeah. I have to put another layer. I don't know if you can see it now. Yeah, That's yeah, we 24 can see it. Wow. So 28. 32, I think. And I think I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, wow. eight, nine. So I can actually have 10 of these, which will mean I can have 40 plants growing in this small environment. So for people that say, oh, I am in Lagos, I am in Abuja, I do not have space. Yeah. I can have 40 plants growing in a small space. So imagine if I am someone that takes vegetables a lot. I can grow so many vegetables in my small area and even have enough now to be given out as for that Christmas. Mm -hmm. So anybody wow. can grow. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Someone asked, um, can you use vertical planter for pepper and tomatoes? Yes, you yeah. can. Yes, you can. Yes. It's just mm -hmm. once you understand, say for instance, even if I want to use something as small as this for tomatoes, I need to just remember that, okay, tomatoes require space to grow. I need to give it room. So that will determine the spacing of my holes because mm. of what I want to grow. Mm. Hmm. Okay. Okay. Really interesting. Okay, okay, okay. So yes, um, someone asked, um, will the roots of the plants not affect one the one inside, like a different bowl? Can one? I'm not seeing. I'm getting the question. Okay, so so the person asked, will the roots? Sorry, let me just read that again. Will the roots of the plant not affect one, like you know, like the other one inside a different bowl? Like I'm think, I think the person's referring no. to plant has no. Remember that in this method, you are the, we are the ones supplying their nutrients. So they are not... The reason why plants tend to compete is because in the soil, there is nobody deliberately feeding them every day. So imagine a boarding school where they know that the school feeds all the students every day. There is no... There, you are not going to hear anything like students fighting over food because yeah. every student understands there is food for all of us. The mm -hmm. same way... The plants understand we are not competing for food. We are going to get as much food as we want. So there is only competition. Competition is born out of scarcity. I don't know how many Nigerians today have gone out to fight for oxygen to breathe. Yeah. I don't know how many Nigerians fight for oxygen to breathe because we have air everywhere. Yeah. So... There is no competition for them because they are not fighting to get food. They are not fighting to get water. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting. Okay. So, um, someone just said, um, please, how do I get nutrients? How do I get nutrients mixed for hydroponics? And is it complete? Is it a complete mix, or do I have to mix the chemicals myself? Now, there are different. How do you get nutrients for hydroponics? There are different types of nutrients available for hydroponics. Depending on what you want, I will take it. I will take like two minutes to so explain the different types. The cheapest nutrient for hydroponics is the one you throw away every day. That is your urine. Your urine contains what we call urea, and urea is basically ammonia. Ammonia is basically nitrogen. Now, your ammonia is what. Ve leafy vegetable plant requires the most to grow. So if I have a system and I feed it with urine, 
I am practicing what we call peponics. When next you go to all of these brand stores to go and buy food that are packaged, read what is written on some of your packages. Some of them, they will write clearly, plant grown using peponics. What they are telling you in essence is, the nutrient we used in feeding this plant was from urine. That is example mm. one. Example two is, if you have someone that has a fish pond, yeah. you can use the waste product from that fish pond, catfish pond, to feed your plant because it is also the same urea. Then, if you are the owner of the fish pond yourself, you can put something like this that we explained earlier on top of the fish pond for leafy vegetables. Your vegetables will grow and clean up the water. If you are used to going to the pond those days to stream, you will know that the cleanest form of water inside the stream is where plants are growing. So the same way, if you have your vegetable plant on something like this floating on top of your fish pond, it cleans the water because the plant will feed on the nutrients. When you do that, we call that aquaponics. Then a third method to get your nutrients is you can use your eggshell and your banana peel. A single eggshell, a single banana peel, you dry them. Once you dry them, grind them into powder, add a little bit of vinegar, you have nutrients for your vegetable. A banana peel and an eggshell is enough for about 10 liters of water for your nutrients. If you don't want to do that, you can do what we call herbal tea. A herbal tea is simply people soaking uh, herbs and using the water to grow. Now, you notice that all the ones that I've talked about so far are more of from natural sources. Yes. If you cannot go through that stress, you can buy already made fertilizers, hydroponic fertilizers. Now, we have three types of hydroponic fertilizers. We have the single type. The single type is you buy the different, different individual nutrients, calcium nitrate, potassium nitrate, all of that, and start missing it yourself. As a beginner, we don't advise that because it is stressful. Option two is you can buy the part A and part B. We have so many people selling that now in Nigeria. You can get from Big Farm, from Dizengo, from Gatna Kalawe, from Salad View, so many people that you can get nutrients from. The part A and part B. The good news about buying this is they tell you how to miss it. So there is no confusion. If you don't want to buy the part A's and the part B, you can go for the third type, which is a compound type that contains everything already. It is not A and B. You just buy a single one that contains everything and you use it like that. So we have different types. Let me see if I can show you what I have here. Really interesting. So for example, this is a type here. This one tells us one, two, three types. I should use this when I have started growing. Use this throughout. Use this if it is a plant that we fruit. So the three of them are inside. So I know once my plant is flowering, I start using this. Before mm. they start flowering, I am using this. In both stages, I am using the middle one. So use, getting nutrients is quite simple. Just a minute. Wow. Wow. <laughs> Please send more questions if you have more questions. Um, I'm actually going to the comment because section. This is, is quite heavy to carry. This is another type that somebody gave to me to test. This is called, you may not be able to see what is written. This is the part B. There is the part A. And the person has already told me how to add the A and the B together to get the result I want. So getting a new trend is quite simple. Missing it is also quite simple. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. So um, I think you, you definitely answered that person's question well. Someone asked, do you have a YouTube channel? Um, yes, I have a YouTube channel. Okay, just so, search some stuff only on YouTube. On YouTube, okay. So that that just answered that person's question, and I know that more people. Um, if I have to, like, just remembering the, the time we came for the adventure, um, at your place, um, a lot of people actually had like a lot of questions. So I'm sure people watching, if you have like more questions, and um, 
and you feel like you know you actually want to start hydroponics and just pretty much start growing your food at home please feel free to reach out to samson um um he's handled um i think it's actually in our um timeline he's on our timeline and then um, after this session we're going to reshare re this video on our instagram um, tv so you can also watch it but i feel like the best thing is if you can reach out to samson i'm sure he will be pretty much happy to you know if you want to maybe get stuff maybe get seeds or you know whatever you want to get and if you feel like he has these things, please reach out to him to take this whole thing further. And majorly, Samson, I'm very happy that you were able to do this. Very, very happy. Like, thank you so much. I, I've, I've actually learned. I'm going to definitely call you after this call. Maybe tomorrow morning. Oh, okay, no, tomorrow is Easter. Maybe Monday. Okay. You know, just pretty much just to, you know, talk about something that is just on my mind. Because I actually need to, I need to grow something in this house. Even if it's something like something I actually need to eat, not just plants. You know, I need to go food in my house, and, and hopefully I will be able to. Maybe when it grows a bit, I will have something again back, and then I, I can show you people what I grew, which will be like a very proud moment. I do it. So, um, I think someone said. I think someone asked them, "How much will it cost to start a reasonable hydroponics farm?" And another person asked, "Does all vegetables require some?" Um, require same nutrient composition those are those will be the last two questions i will take until um do all the vegetables require the same nutrient composition no all leafy vegetables require almost the same thing fruity vegetables require almost the same thing that is the difference then um of course you have to look at the weather where you are growing and all of that then what is the reasonable amount you can use to start up a hydroponic farm it depends on you uh, if you, it depends on the kind of system you want to build. Do you want to use the PVC pipe? Do you want to use the bowls? Your creativity plays a big role in how much you spend. Then also, how beautiful do you want your farm to look? Do you want a farm that people will come and be like, oh, this farm is so fine. Of course, you have to spend more money to make it so fine. Or are you just after functionality? Like, I am getting what I want. It is functional. So all of that plays a big role, yeah. Okay, okay. Um, someone said everyone needs to start growing food in their homes. Um, um, yeah, yeah, which is true, which is true. So, yes, so um, thank you very much, Samson, for coming live with us. Mm -hmm. And this has been like a lecture field, educational field. I don't think I have any other adjectives. I don't think I have any other words to explain. <laughs> but really, overall, thank you so much. I actually learned a lot, and I'm sure our audience actually also learned so much too thank and, you so much for doing this and um do you have any, what, what did you say i, uh, I said thank, thank you good night and happy easter everybody yes thank you so much and happy easter and please everyone leave this whole class in quotes you know with um learning to grow food yourself and please feel free to reach out to something and if you want to see this video play you can watch the next one for our However, after, after 24 hours, we're going to upload it on our Instagram TV and also on our YouTube channel. So, yes, thank you so much again and have a fantastic evening. You too. Thank you so much. Thank you.